Glass is gorgeous, but it might be a bit dangerous to add to your next card project. Fortunately, you can achieve the look of cracked glass with this classic and timeless technique. Every technique video is narrated live while I'm doing the technique, so you're getting a real-time view of how the whole process works. Pull out the supplies I'm using and create right along with me, pausing as you need. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. The cracked glass technique has been around for ages. It comes and goes, but it's a classic for a reason, because it's absolutely stunning. You can use any kind of project with this technique. So if you've got a splattered background or something that you've stamped and prepped, uh, however you've done it, it will work. And if you want to do it on die cut pieces, I recommend that you die cut them first and have everything ready to go. So that way the last step is to do the cracked glass technique and you've got everything that is in its final shape for your project. For this technique, I'm just going to show you the straight up basics. You can riff off of this in many different ways, but um, this is really the straightforward basic way to do it. So you have a piece that you want to add the technique to and it's ready to go. It's nice and dry. Um, you don't have anything wet on here that might smear when you put on your first layer of Versamark. What else you're going to need is, of course, some clear embossing powder, your heat tool. And if you have it, this ultra thick embossing powder will kind of shorten the timeline because it is extra thick um, it will require only like two coats instead of three or four if you're using regular embossing powder so the first step is to get your Versamark all over your project if you're creating a whole panel you want the whole thing to have this cracked glass look you are putting Versamark over the entire higher thing so be pretty generous about it at least you don't have to worry about anti-static powder or getting embossing powder where you don't want it it's going over everything so i've got it all nice and soaked up on my cardstock here and i am going to start with the ultra thick embossing powder so as you can see this is more of a granular powder um, because it is so thick it goes on super super thick and it's definitely crystalline. So we'll put on the entire layer. There we go. Tap off the excess as normal. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up. Since I'm heating up the whole panel, I am going to use my um, paper piercing tool just to hold this down in place. So that way I can get my heat gun over it and not have to worry about getting my fingers in this. So now that my first layer is complete, you can see that I've got embossing powder over the whole thing, but that really isn't enough to achieve the look and to get it to crack. So there are some places where there isn't quite as much and it just needs to be coated like two or three more times to get a nice thick layer of embossing powder on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on a second and third coat of the ultra thick powder. If you've got just regular embossing powder, you may need about four coats for this.
that was a third layer of the ultra thick embossing powder and like I said if you use regular embossing powder probably take you about four or five layers to get it about this thick um, but it is really nice and glossy and chunky it now just needs to cool and you can actually get better results if you pop this in the refrigerator or freezer for a few minutes to help your embossing powder get really rock hard all right so i just popped this out of the freezer and it's looking really great and it's very easy now to go ahead and just start cracking the embossing powder you can see it's going to crack and break just like a piece of glass would of course it's much safer and we've got this paper backing so everything is going to stay on here get some really awesome cracking in here you can crack as much or as little as you like and honestly if you end up not liking it you can always reheat it and get all of those cracks to melt back together and try it again but once you've got it the way you like you can leave it just like this it looks absolutely stunning this way you've got all of these little crazed lines through here it's just really amazing or if you like you can take some ink and add it to your project and this is going to get in those little cracks and give it kind of an antique look so once you have them all in the cracks the way you like just scrubbing it right over that embossing powder just go ahead and take a paper towel and wipe it off. And then if you need to, you can spray it down because it's completely waterproof at this point and get more of that off there to really reveal a gorgeous antique look. And I think when you antique it like this, it really does give it um, and some extra dimension. It really makes it more stunning than it is to begin with. And look at that. It's just absolutely beautiful. And this will look amazing as a background piece on an upcoming card or project. I hope you enjoyed this technique and you add it into your toolbox sometime soon. When you give it a try, share it out on Instagram and tag me at Nicole Watt Creates. I always love to see what your creative mind is thinking. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. And until next time, happy crafting.